he went directly to the bishop of geneva who till then had manifested much esteem and kindness for me he persuaded him that it would be proper to secure me to that house to oblige me to give up to it the annual income i had reserved to myself to engage me thereto by making me prioress he had gained such an ascendancy over the bishop that the people in the country called him the little bishop he drew him to enter heartily and with zeal into his proposition and to resolve to bring it about whatever it should cost the ecclesiastic having so far carried his point and being swelled with his success no longer kept any measures in regard to me he began with causing all the letters which i sent and those which were directed to me to be stopped that was in order to have it in his power to make what impressions he pleased on the minds of others and that i should neither be able to know it nor to defend myself nor to give or send to my friends any account of the manner in which i was treated one of the maids i had brought wanted to return she could have no rest in this place the other that remained was infirm too much taken up by others to help me in anything as father lacombe was soon to come i thought he would soften the violent spirit of this man and that he will give me proper advice in the meantime they proposed to me the engagement and the post of prioress i answered that as to the engagement it was impossible for me since my vocation was elsewhere and i could not regularly be the prioress till after passing through the novitiate in which they had all served two years before they being engaged when i should have done as much i should see how god would inspire me the prioress replied quite tartly that if i would ever leave them it were best for me to do it immediately yet i did not offer to retire but continued still to act as usual. I saw the sky gradually thickening and storms gathering on every side. The prioress then affected a milder air. She assured me that she had a desire as well as I to go to Geneva, that I should not engage, but only promise her to take her with me if i went thither she pretended to place a great confidence in me and professed a high esteem for me as i am very free and have nothing but uprightness i let her know that i had no attraction for the manner of life of the new catholics by reason of the intrigues from without Several things did not please me, because I wanted them to be upright in everything. She signified that she did not consent to such things, but because that ecclesiastic told her they were necessary to give the house a credit in distant parts and to draw charities from Paris. I answered, that if we walk uprightly, God will never fail us. He will sooner do miracles for us. I remarked to her that when, instead of sincerity, they had recourse to artifice, charity grew cold and kept herself shut up. It is God alone who inspires charity. How? then 
is it to be drawn by disguises. Soon after Father Lacombe came about the retreats, this was the third and last time that he came to Gex. The prioress, after she had been tampering a good deal with me, having written him a long letter before his coming, and received his answer, which she showed me, now went to ask him whether she would one day be united to me at Geneva. He answered with his usual uprightness. Our Lord has made it known to me that you shall never be established at Geneva. Soon after she died. When he had uttered this declaration, she appeared enraged against both him and me. She went directly to that ecclesiastic who was in a room with the house steward, and they took their measures together to oblige me either to engage or retire. They thought that I would sooner engage than retire, and they watched my letters. With a design to lay snares for him, he requested Father Lacombe to preach. He did on this text. The king's daughter is beautiful within. That ecclesiastic, who was present with his confidant, said that it was preached against him and was full of errors. He drew up eight propositions and inserted in them what the other had not preached, adjusting them as maliciously as ever he could, then sent them to one of his friends in Rome to get them examined by the sacred congregation and by the inquisition. Though he had very ill digested them, at Rome they were pronounced good. That greatly disappointed and vexed him. After having been treated in this manner, and appropriately reviled by him in the most offensive terms, the father, with much mildness and humility, told him that he was going to Annecy about some affairs of the convent. If he had anything to write to the bishop of Geneva, he would take care of his letter. He then desired him to wait a while as he was going to write. The good father had the patience to wait above three hours without hearing from him. Though he had treated him exceedingly ill, so far as to snatch out of his hands a letter I had given him for that worthy hermit I have mentioned. Hearing he was not gone, but was still in the church, I went to him and begged him to send to see if the other's packet was ready. The day was so far gone that he would be obliged to lodge by the way. When the messenger arrived, he found a servant of the ecclesiastic on horseback ordered to go at full speed, to be at Annecy before the father. He then returned an answer that he had no letters to send by him. This was so contrived that he might gain time to propose the bishop for his purposes. Father Lacombe then sent off for Annecy, and on his arrival found the bishop prepossessed and in an ill humor. This was the substance of the discourse. Bishop, you must absolutely engage this lady to give what she has to the house at Gex and make her the prioress of it. Father Lacombe, my lord, you know what she has told you herself of her vocation, 
both at paris and in this country i therefore do not believe that she will engage nor is there any likelihood that after quitting her all in the hope of entering geneva she should engage elsewhere and thereby put it out of her power to accomplish the designs of god in regard to her she has offered to stay with those sisters as a boarder if they are willing to keep her as such she will remain with them if not she is resolved to retire into some convent till god shall dispose of her otherwise bishop i know all that but i likewise know that she is so very obedient that if you order her she will assuredly do it father lacombe it is for that reason my lord that one ought to be very cautious in the commands which they lay on her can i induce a foreign lady who for all her subsistence has nothing but a small pittance she has reserved to herself to give that up in favor of a house which is not yet established and perhaps never will be if the house should happen to fail or to be no longer of use what shall that lady live on shall she go to the hospital and indeed this house will not long be of any use since there are no protestants in any part of france near it bishop these reasons are good for nothing if you do not make her do what i have said i will degrade and suspend you this manner of speaking somewhat surprised the father he well enough understands the rules of suspicion which are not executed on such things he replied my lord i am ready not only to suffer the suspension but even death rather than do anything against my conscience having said that he retired he directly sent me this account by an express to the end that i might take proper measures i had no other course to take but to retire into a convent i received a letter informing me that the nun to whom i had entrusted my daughter had fallen sick and had been desiring me to go to her for some time i showed this letter to the sisters of our house telling them that i had a mind to go but if they ceased to persecute me and will leave father lacombe in peace i will return as soon as the mistress of my daughter should be recovered instead of this they persecuted me more violently wrote to paris against me stopped all my letters and sent libels against me around the country the day after my arrival at tunon father lacombe set off for the valley of aust to preach there in lent he had come to take leave of me and told me that he should go from thence to rome and perhaps not return as his superiors might detain him there that he was sorry to leave me in a strange country without succor and persecuted of every one i replied my father that gives me no pain i use the creatures for god and by his order through his mercy i do very well without them when he withdraws them i am very well consented never to see you and to abide under persecution if such be his will he said 
he would go well satisfied to see me in such a disposition and then departed as soon as i go to the ursulines a very aged and pious priest who for twenty years past had not come out of his solitude came to find me he told me that he had a vision relative to me that he had seen a woman in a boat on the lake and that the bishop of geneva with some of his priests exerted all their efforts to sink the boat she was in and to draw her that he continued in this vision above two hours with pain of mind that it seemed sometimes as if this woman were quite drawn as for some time she quite disappeared but afterward she appeared again and ready to escape the danger while the bishop never ceased to pursue her this woman was always equally calm but he never saw her entirely free from him from hence i conclude added he that the bishop will persecute you without intermission i had an intimate friend wife of that governor of whom i have made some mention as she saw i had quitted everything for god she had a warm desire to follow me with diligence did she dispose of all her efforts and settle her affairs in order to come to me but when she heard of the persecution she was discouraged from coming to a place from whence she thought i should be obliged to retire soon after she died End of chapter 6, volume 2